if you remember this roller was um, badly damaged and I think what's happened is the the top spool arm has clunked down with a spool on it and that spool has landed here and clunked this section here which, which could well be why this whole piece is now bent slightly but importantly I've got to get it straight so I think that might be the mystery of why that side of that roller was badly damaged. Not sure which side it was now actually where the roller was on but anyway uh, originally but it would happen either side if the um, if the spool was on here when it came down. Third sprocket's off, very easy because there's just a retainer on the front that holds it on, I've taken that off. There, there are no um, pins connecting it to the shaft because it revolves on the shaft. Unlike the others, and you can see here where there's been quite a lot of abuse and hammering going on over the years with attempts to remove that pin. That's all old damage. Now here, we've got something else happening, which is, I've put that sprocket back temporarily, and the problem is this, this roller guide. And you might be able to see on the left hand side it's not touching the sprocket and on the right hand side it's binding on the sprocket and they need to be equal yeah, there's a gap there on the left no gap on the right so this is bent and you can actually see that <coughs> well I can it's it's just not in line so this roller guard is coming off, get that onto the bench and straighten it up. After that's been done <coughs> and the lens unit reassembled temporarily, the clean up is about 80% done. See here we've got nickel plated piece and what I'm going to do there is dunk that in vinegar until just the rust hopefully will disappear and it'll look a lot better but I'm not scraping any of the nickel pieces too much obviously we'll lose the nickel Nick has pointed out that on the spool arms there's no place for a spool box to be mounted normally there'll be a little attach a uh, little section here with a screw thread in or whatever somewhere for the spool box to be attached and there isn't and that's important because it suggests that these arms were intended for use were made before the 1909 act that required spool boxes to be fitted which came into force early in uh, 1910 I think and consequently we can date the arms as the same date as the projector which is about 1908 so uh, interesting. So the cleanup is about 80% done, and as you know, when you're 80% done, you're nearly halfway there. So I'm going to just reassemble that temporarily so I don't lose anything, uh, and then put that to one side while I work on the lamp house. But it's still blowing a storm outside, so I think it's probably going to be a few days before I start back on that. At some point soon I'm going to have to consider this 
what to do with it. The electric motor for the cam, or one that was used with the cam anyway. Very exposed, and I'm thinking, what was that on originally? Uh, a fan of some kind, or... But it will be cleaned up and I will test the continuity and if we've got some continuity I might draw 120 volts on it and see what happens. And of course, when I do that and we get a result or not, you'll be the first to know. Now in my admittedly limited experience, old motors tend to have identification maker's plate details haven't found anything on this um, and that and the fact that it's rather exposed the windings rather exposed Ooh. that doesn't look so good mm. well hmm well That's come with a sheath there to here, so maybe that's just ragged because it's the end of the sheath. Can't see a broken wire, so we'll find out. Anyway, the thing is, the fact that it's exposed like that and no plate on it of any kind suggests to me it was inside something. That's my theory, and I'm sticking with it. So it's not an old projector motor. Anyone recognise it? I've done a Google image search, I can't really find anything that looks much like it. But um, so, comments below please if you know anything about old electric motors, especially ones that are found in England. Actually looking at the sheath cables that I can see, they're very poor. The rubber's cracking up and I don't like the look of this sort of thing. I'm putting maybe 110 or even 240 volts in there. No. So the only way that could get plugged in again is to dismantle it and see if there's continuity on the coils um, and whether it's access sufficiently accessible to be able to replace any of these coloured sheathed, sheathed wires, which frankly I doubt. So not not something that I would tackle. No doubt an electric motor company used to rewinding motors would consider that to be a doddle, but well, I'm not going down that route. Unless I can absolutely prove that this is an original motor that came with a cam, and I don't think it is.